Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you some photos of our recent visit to Charleston in South Carolina. Now we've recently been on holiday to America and while we were there we visited Charleston in South Carolina. Now it really is a beautiful place with lovely architecture um, and I've got lots of photographs that I thought I'd share with you but as well as just sharing the photographs what I've also done is I've included lots of facts and history about Charleston. Um, it's quite a fascinating place and it's probably most known for its history with the slave trade in the south of America. Now if you are interested interested in history of the American South, this will definitely be interesting, or you might just want to see some nice pictures of a really picturesque town. Either way, I'm sure you'll really enjoy watching me enjoy my photography. Charleston is the most populous city in the US state of South Carolina, the county seat of Charleston County and the principal city in the Charleston metropolitan area. The city lies just south of the geographical midpoint of South Carolina's coastline on the Charleston Harbour, an inlet of the Atlantic Ocean formed by the confluence of the Ashley, Cooper and Wando rivers. Honouring King Charles II at Abermall Point on the west bank of the Ashley River, now Charlestown Landing but relocated in 1680 to its present site, which became the fifth largest city in North America within 10 years. Charleston adopted its present spelling with its incorporation as a city in 1783. Charleston's significance in American history is tied to its role as a major slave trading port. Charleston's slave traders like Joseph Fragg were the first to break through the monopoly of the Royal African Company and pioneered the large-scale slave trade in the 18th century. Almost one half of the slaves imported into the United States arrived in Charleston. King Charles II granted the chartered province of Carolina to eight of his loyal friends, known as the Lord's Proprietors, on the 24th of March in 1663. In 1670, Governor William Sale arranged for several shiploads of settlers from Bermuda and Barbados. These settlers established what was then called Charlestown at Abermall Point on the west bank of the Ashley River, a few miles northwest of the present day city centre. Charlestown became the first comprehensively planned town in the 13 colonies. At the time of the European colonization, the area was inhabited by the indigenous Kusabo, on whom the settlers declared war in October 1671. The settlers initially allied with the Westo, a northern indigenous tribe that traded with enslaved Indians. The settlers abandoned their alliance with the Westo in 1679 and allied with the Kosovo instead. A smallpox outbreak erupted in 1698, followed by an earthquake in February 1699. The latter caused a fire that destroyed about a third of the town. During rebuilding, a yellow fever outbreak killed about 15% of the remaining inhabitants and Charlestown suffered between five and eight major yellow fever outbreaks over the first half of the 18th century. It developed a reputation as one of the least healthy locations in the 13 colonies for ethnic Europeans. Malaria was also endemic and although malaria didn't have such high mortality as yellow fever, it caused much illness. It was a major health problem through most of the city's history before dying out in the 1950s after use of pesticides cut down on the mosquitoes that transmitted it. By 1708, the majority of the colony's population were black Africans. They had been brought to Charlestown via the Atlantic slave trade, first as indentured servants and then as slaves. In the early 1700s, Charlestown's largest slave trader, Joseph Ragg, pioneered the settlement's involvement in the slave trade. Of the estimated 400,000 captive Americans transported to North America to be sold into slavery, 40% are thought to have landed at Sullivan's Island off Charlestown. At the foundation of the town, the principal items of commerce were pine timber and pitch for ships and tobacco. But the area's unsuitability for growing tobacco prompted the low country planters to experiment with other cash crops. The profitability of growing rice led the planters to pay premiums for slaves from the rice coast who knew about its cultivation. 
Throughout this period, the slaves were sold aboard arriving ships or at haddock gatherings in the town's taverns. Runaways and minor slave rebellions prompted the 1739 Security Act, which required all white men to carry weapons at all times, even to church on Sundays. By the mid-18th century, Charlestown was a hub of the Atlantic slave trade in the southern colonies. Even with a decade-long moratorium, its customs processed around 40% of the enslaved Africans brought to North America between 1700 and 1775, and about half up until the end of the African trade. The plantations and the economy based on them made this the wealthiest city in the 13 colonies and the largest population of South Philadelphia. In 1770, the city had 11,000 inhabitants, half of them were slaves, and the fourth largest port in the colonies after Boston, New York City, and Philadelphia. During the American Revolution, delegates for the Continental Congress were elected in 1774, and South Carolina declared its independence from Britain on the steps of the exchange. Slavery was again an important factor in the city's role during the Revolutionary War. Making the capture of Charlestown their chief priority, the British sent Sir Henry Clinton, who laid siege to Charlestown on the 1st of April, 1780. The Patriots, led by Benjamin Lincoln had about 5,500 men and inadequate fortifications to rebel the forces against them. After Lincoln's surrender on the 12th of May in 1780, it became the greatest American defeat of the war. The period between the Revolutionary War and the Civil War is known as the Antebellum Era. The word antebellum literally means before the war. Now, during this time, Charleston experienced an economic boom, at least for the top strata of society anyway. The expansion of cotton as a cash crop in the South led to huge wealth for a small segment of society and funded impressive architecture and culture, but also escalated the importance of slaves and led to greater and greater restrictions on black Charlestonians. Although Columbia had replaced it as a state capital in 1788, Charleston became even more prosperous as Eli Whitney's 1793 invention of the cotton gin sped up the processing of the crop by over 50 times. Britain's Industrial Revolution, initially built upon its textile industry, took up the extra production ravenously, and cotton became Charleston's major export commodity in the 19th century. Throughout the antebellum period, Charleston continued to be the only major American city with a major slave population. The city's widespread use of slaves as workers was a frequent subject of writers and visitors. Much more important was the domestic slave trade, which boomed as the Deep South was developed in new cotton plantations. As a result of the trade, there was a forced migration of more than one million slaves from the Upper South to the Lower South in the antebellum years. During the 19th century, the first dedicated slave markets were founded in Charleston. Slave ownership was a primary marker of class, and even the town's freedmen and free people of colour typically kept slaves if they had the wealth to do so. The effects of slavery were pronounced on white society as well. The high cost of the 19th century slaves and their high rate of return combined to institute an oligarchic society controlled by about 90 interrelated families where 4% of the free population controlled half of the wealth and the lower half of the free population, unable to compete with owned or rented slaves, held no wealth at all. The white middle class was minimal. All slave owners taken together held 82% of the city's wealth, and almost all non-slaveholders were poor. Charleston's embrace of classical architecture began after a devastating fire levelled much of the city. On the 27th of April in 1838, Charleston suffered a catastrophic fire that burned more than a thousand buildings and caused three million dollars of damage, and that's equivalent to 77 million dollars in 2021. The damaged buildings amounted to about one-fourth of all the businesses in the main part of the city. When many homes and businesses were rebuilt or repaired, a great cultural awakening occurred. 
Charleston played a major part in the Civil War. As a pivotal city, both the Union and Confederate armies vied for control of it. The Civil War began in Charleston Harbor in 1861 and ended mere months after the Union forces took control of Charleston in 1865. The first battle of the American Civil War occurred on the 12th of April in 1861, when shore batteries under the command of General PGT Beauregard opened fire on the US Army held Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor. After a 34-hour bombardment, Major Robert Anderson surrendered the fort. On the 11th of December in 1861, an enormous fire burned over 50 acres of the city. Following the end of the Civil War and the defeat of the Confederacy, Federal forces remained in Charleston during Reconstruction. The war had shattered the city's prosperity, but the African-American population surged from 17,000 in 1860 to over 27,000 in 1880, as freedmen moved from the countryside to the major city. They purchased dogs, guns and liquor and better clothes, all previously banned, and they ceased yielding the sidewalks to whites. Then finally, on the 17th of June in 2018, the Charleston City Council apologised for its role in the slave trade and condemned its inhumane history. And it also acknowledged the wrongs committed against African Americans by slavery. Charleston has a humid subtropical climate with mild winters and humid summers and significant rainfall all year long. Summer is the wettest season. Almost half of the annual rainfall occurs from June to September in the form of thunder showers. The highest temperature recorded within city limits was 40 degrees Celsius on the 2nd of June in 1985. And the lowest temperature recorded was on the 14th of February in 1899 with a chilly minus 14 degrees Celsius. Hurricanes are a major threat to the area during the summer and early autumn, with several severe hurricanes hitting the area. Most notably, the eye of Hurricane Hugo came ashore at Charleston Harbour in 1989. Though the worst damage was in nearby McLennanville, three quarters of the homes in Charleston's historic district sustained damage of varying degrees. The hurricane caused over $2.8 billion worth of damage. The city was able to rebound fairly quickly after the hurricane and has grown in population, reaching an estimated 24,500 residents in 2009. The Port of Charleston, owned and operated by the South Carolina Ports Authority, is one of the largest ports in the United States, ranked seventh in the top 25 by containerized cargo volume in 2018. It consists of six terminals, with the sixth having opened in April 2021. Port activity at the two terminals located at the city of Charleston is one of the city's leading sources of revenue behind tourism. Part of Union Pier Terminal in the city of Charleston is a cruise ship passenger terminal which hosted numerous cruise departures annually beginning in May 2019 until cruise operations were interrupted in April 2020, the Carnival Sunshine was permanently stationed in Charleston, offering four, five and seven day cruises to the Caribbean. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I've certainly enjoyed researching all of those facts about Charleston and finding out lots of um, details to put with those photographs. It really was a fascinating place to visit and a lovely place to photograph. And it was a massive contrast with New York that we visited a few days previously. If you've enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram or Vero account, that's at Dokedon Photography. Leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, I want to help support me to make future content like this, then you can leave via the gift shop. That's at Teespring. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer. So head off over there, check out what I've got because the purchase is really appreciated. Now, you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel though. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications because it really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, you can go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, Stay safe and I'll see you soon.